This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host, Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, host of the Dr. John Deloney Show, number one best-selling author, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. As we talk about your work, your relationships, your money, you, and how all of these things interact, we're glad you're here. Open phones again, 888-825-5225. Julia's in Iowa City, Iowa, to start off this hour. Hi, Julia. How are you? I'm so good. Hi, you guys. Thank you for taking my call. I am like your biggest fan. Okay. Well, we're honored. How can Um, we help? Okay, I'm a little nervous. Um, I'm 23 years old. Um, I work as a nurse, and I'm currently on baby steps four, five, and six. Um, I plan to start travel nursing here in August, um, just in hopes to increase my income and learn a bit more. Um, and my question for you guys is: um, Should I think about buying a house or a condo to rent out while I travel nurse, or should I just wait on that? I'd wait. Yeah. Okay. You're 23. You got time. Mm-hmm. One thing about travel nursing okay. that we know is you're going to pile up a big pile of money while you're doing this. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> and with that pile of money, you might make a different purchase than you would make today. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, also um, renting, while, you know, dealing with tenants while you don't live in the town because you're running around all over the place can uh, leave yeah. you pretty vulnerable to a mess. And my what guess about is like a property manager? Like, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's okay to have a property manager, but let me just tell you that there's mm-hmm. one thing you got to know about real estate. It all sounds mm-hmm. good until you actually are doing it. Yeah. And when you're actually doing it, okay. there's blood and guts and cat pee in the living room. I mean, it's just, there's stuff yeah. you deal with that's real. And, um, mm-hmm. I, I've owned real estate for 40 years and I love real estate, but I, people that have not owned rental real estate or that are all enamored with getting rich in real estate, um, have yeah. not figured out that it is a lot of stuff to deal with. I, I've got a property mm-hmm. management company that I own that manages my properties and I'm still, Ask questions almost every day. Walk by one of them's desk mm-hmm. a while ago, and she stopped me and said, hey, what about this with this tenant? And and I'm not even doing the day-to-day management, but she was just wanting to know because it was a large situation. So, you know, th- you're just going to – everything's a large situation here. You're, you're adding hassle to your life. I would keep my life clean and pile up some money. Yeah, especially if you're traveling. My, my <laughs> guess is you're going to go to some city or some state, and you're going to love it, and you're going to wish you weren't tethered down somewhere else, right? Ooh. That could happen. Yeah. Yeah. You could get the uh, itch to relocate mm-hmm. when this is all done. And because you're going to see some cool places. Yeah. You know, that's one of the benefits of doing what I've done all these years. I've gotten to see America's great cities and, uh, and love them. I mean, there's a lot of really cool places to live in America. I tell you what, and last there year. There are some armpits yeah. in America. <laughs> last year, I was on the road more than <clears throat> I've ever been. And yeah, there's some I just places I've never been to. Incredible, beautiful places. Yep. All over the country. And then there's other pe- places you go and you go, why does humans live here? <laughs> I remember thinking. The place looks like Beirut. Y'all know we can like choose. You can out. live wherever you want to. And yeah. well, it's cool, whatever. Yeah, it, it's, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's, it's, there's a lot of fun out there to yeah. be had and, and a lot of uh, adventure to be had. Go have that. Yeah. Okay. Let's good, say 23. Good question. Rochelle is with us. Rochelle's in Los Angeles. Hi, Rochelle. How are you? Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. Dave, thank you so very much for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Okay, so I have a company lease vehicle. I know, don't kill me. I, I, I know, I know, I know. And I wanted to find out what are your thoughts on, even though it, the company pays for the lease, I am currently on my way to, um, I'm in step number three, four right now, of my baby step. But my question is, do I pay off the lease or do I sell it now that the, that the market is so high? Okay. Like one, one of, of us is confused. 
Okay. Me sorry. or you won. <laughs> Me or you won. Okay. <laughs> there is no such thing as a company lease. The, either the company owns yeah. the car and they're furnishing you the car, or you went and leased a car and you have a car allowance. Correct. Number two, I oh. lease the vehicle. It's underneath my name, okay. and the company gives me um, $500 a month. Which, by the to, way, they would um, give you if the car was paid for. Oh, okay. They give you the $500 either way. So you don't have a company lease. There's no such thing, okay? You okay. have a leased Thank car. You, you have a leased car, yep. and your company gives you money as a car allowance for the use of your personal vehicle. Correct. And if so, you get fired tomorrow, you've got to pay that lease out. Yep. Correct. So this is a debt you have, and um, you need to get the, either the car paid off or get it sold, one of the two, as soon as okay. you can, as soon as you can. I mean, can, can you just pay the lease off? I mean, have you, have you called and asked for the early buyout figure? Um, I did. I haven't called yet, but I did. I just looked on the statement, and it's um, $28,000. Maybe twenty thousand and change. Yeah. No, maybe. Uh, let's let's go back a minute because there's two things show up on these statements. There's, is that the total of all remaining payments? Um, the or you're talking about like the residual. The twenty eight thousand. Um, no, the twenty eight thousand would be the residual plus all remaining payments. That's a total. That's a top figure. A total of payments. That is not the early buyout. The early buyout is what they will let you pay it off for today, which does not include what we call interest, but they call cost of capital. Okay. I would have to call to get that exact number, but I yes. believe um, it's closer to like 32000 or 33000 No, it would be less than 28000 Not including the final payment and the residual amount to buy out the vehicle. Okay. You're misunderstanding. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm nervous. There, 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 it's Sorry. Okay. okay. It's okay. Let's walk through it right quick because I want to make because it's good for everybody to understand that what could okay. be showing on your statement is one of two different numbers. The twenty eight thousand is one of these two numbers. Okay. It could okay. be the residual value is what you can buy the car for at the end of the lease. Okay. Plus all of your payments up until the end of the lease. How long until the end of the lease? Okay. Okay, I have exactly 12 months left. Of okay, the so lease, 12 times I... your payment plus the residual, does that equal 28000 No, sir, it's actually more. Okay, then the 28000 is probably your early buyout because that's the total okay. obligation you have, the, the more number, the 12 payments plus the residual value. The early buyout is as if you paid off your car 12 months early, and it saves okay. you 12 months of interest on twenty. Thirty thousand bucks, so it's probably three thousand dollars less than the total of payments. And some, we, I, I don't ever know which is showing up on these statements unless they are very clear with it. So, if you can sell the car for more than twenty-eight thousand, you probably should. And then let's figure out a way to get you a car bought that your that your company approves of, so you continue to get the. Um, car allowance and if you take out a little bit of debt on that that's less than you have now that's a good thing If you're considering a career in technology, I recommend Bethel Tech, and I'm not alone. Here's what Brendan said. Before Bethel Tech, I was driving Uber. Within four months of graduating, I got a job paying $60,000. About two years after that, I got a remote job that pays me $130,000, all thanks to what I learned at Bethel Tech. You could be next. Get started today at BethelTech.net and get $1,000 to $2,500 off of your tuition. Again, it's BethelTech.net slash Ken Coleman.
Thank you for joining us, America. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host. He is the author of the best-selling book, Redefining Anxiety, an 80-page quick read. It is available at RamseySolutions.com. You can get it right now. It is resolution season, and if you're like most people, you make resolutions on New Year's Day. By Valentine's Day, you give up on them. The gym is always empty by Valentine's Day, and you can't get a place in there right now if you go to a, a public gym. So if you've decided to take control of your money this year, don't do it alone. Get the support, get the accountability so you make it past Valentine's Day. The best way to do that is plug into something is known as Financial Peace University, our class that has now been taught in over 50,000 churches and locations around America to almost 10 million people, over 6.5 million families have been through this. And uh, you'll go through our proven money plan. We're going to show you exactly how to do this. It's not in question. We've got this dialed in. We know how to help you not only get out of debt, but become wealthy, become a Baby Steps millionaire, and be outrageously generous. We have in-person classes, online classes. You can do both. And uh, you need to plug into this. It's a free trial for Financial Peace University for the Every Dollar uh, premium version of the app ties into your bank and downloads your debit card transactions automatically into your budget. Can't beat that. RamseySolutions.com slash FPU. Try the free trial. RamseySolutions.com slash FPU. So, John, I, I was uh, listening to your podcast, and I loved – no, it wasn't your podcast. It was Entree Leadership's podcast. You're talking about New Year's resolutions. Yeah. And uh, that was a, an upbeat thing that – you uh, be thought you had, and I had never looked at it that way, that it is a wonderful holiday that we celebrate at New Year's because it gives us all a clean slate. It's a, it's a, it's a mulligan. Like, can we, can we, you can do anything, Dave, anything in the world. And like, man, I gained 800 pounds. I started doing drugs, whatever. New Year's resolutions, everyone's like, great, let's, let's do it, right? You can, you can just swipe it and let's do it again, yeah, right? It's, it's like the ultimate grace move. I love it, yeah. Ultimate grace move. So it's it, the year of Jubilee it, every year, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it, but it just reminds you how much of your life you really do control. Yes, that's right. And, and you know, you can just decide, this is my year. Yeah. This year, I'm going to lose weight, get out of debt. I'm going to be nice. Yeah. This year, I'm going to, I mean, that, that, that'd be three good ones. <laughs> <laughs> this year, I'm going to uh, whatever, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it's, you can just decide. Yeah. A- and there's so much that in, in a world that's out of control, yep. there's so much of our lives, our daily lives is that are up to us. Now, yep. we don't control everything. I'm not, a, I'm not fooled by that uh, i understand there's a pandemic or was a pandemic or whatever we call this thing now i understand there is um, political unrest i understand there is racism i understand there i understand all that i can't control any of that but there's a whole lot of my life i can control and i can certainly control how i react to all of those things yes and let's let's put into context this is the part that nobody ever talks about it is um it's, it's a few days after the new year right mm-hmm. we're in that first week and I'm doing some. I'm. Um, I'm. Um, I go all in on these on the New Year stuff. I like to do all kinds of variables and tests with my diet, nutrition, all this kind of stuff. I switch from coffee to tea. Hmm. And Dave, I've had a headache the last forty eight hours. No way. That would melt somebody's. That would melt my my bones. And this is a part of changing things that I mainline coffee as you a way must. of being. Because tea's got plenty of caffeine in it. it yeah, but I'm all oh, this little fancy tea I'm drinking that's imported from Mexico. It's a whole thing. And, but, and you're drinking like a, espresso or something on the coffees, right? I'm mainlining espresso. Mainlining, okay. And so I've gone, all to say is this change is so hard. You didn't just change from coffee to tea. No, 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 no. You went from hardcore crazy coffee to little tea. I, I went from, <laughs> yes, an F350 dually to a Prius. Yes, that's gotcha. what I did. Okay. Um, it still gets me where I need to go, but it's not near the horsepower. Yeah, and the headache is blowing up. It yeah. is. But all I'd say is, how long, how long do you have to have the headache? It's going to be about another day. Is it? And okay. then you know what? I'm going to wake up, and there's going to be like a cataract was peeled off my eyes, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm going to have this. I mean, so all I have to say is, this change, this like just decide, it comes with a cost. Oh, right? yeah. You've got to pay for your pay for the way you're living, whatever yeah. that looks like. Well, if you decide to get a, I, I, I did a, I'm 61. I did a three mile run this morning. Thank you very much. Congratulations, man. And uh, I, I've been, you know, back up on my runs again, yeah. and it got warm enough today that I can actually get out and do that instead of just a walk. And uh, 
But you know, tomorrow I'll pay for that. Yeah. Because I have not. Because I've not. I've not been running for about two weeks. So yeah, I'll, I'll wake up and go. Oh crap! I'm 61. That hurt. And we live in a culture where we we associate pain with we must be doing something wrong. And no, sometimes when it hurts, that means you're on the right path. Right. Yeah. And there's going to be that resistance. Yeah. What is that Marine saying? Pain is something leaving the body. Stupid. Oh, pain the body. is weakness leaving weakness the body. Leaving yeah, the body. Yeah. It's not stupid. It's weakness. Yeah. Weakness leaving the body. Yeah. 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 In some cases, that's true. In some um, cases, absolutely not. In the not, case yeah. where I slammed my finger in the door. I was going to ask you if you were yeah. wearing, uh, if that was like a cool new thing that no, uh, um, knew a nail That's actually what thing. my granddaughter asked. She said, Papa Dave, who, who painted your fingernail? And I said, Satan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking, oh, man, he's going to make his pin fingernails yeah, again. Yeah, no, you don't want to do that one. <laughs> um, and that's after I taught her some new words. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh open phones at 888-825-5225 happy new year lynn is in chicago hi lynn how are you hi dave i am better than i deserve and uh thankful to be in baby step seven thanks to you and a lot of supportive friends um my question today i work for a very solid company with, that is offered an espp and i've participated in it for the over 20 years that I've been there. Wow. But just re- yeah, just recently discovered, the stock's doing very well, just recently discovered, I don't know how I missed it, not paid attention, that they no longer have a six-month look back. So, you know, I guess in most cases, the stock doesn't appreciate maybe that much. I don't know. In this case, uh, closing price in July 1st was $321. Um, December, it was 415 so I'm thinking, well, first of all, I'm 67, so I'm kind of thinking about stopping this program anyway because my um, my stock is, you know, in my in my company is getting to be like 8% now of my total portfolio. And my advisor has suggested that, you know, like you, that I kind of cut back. I'd like to accumulate more cash. I'm 67 years old. And, um, but I guess I better like, What's up with this picture? Why, why, like the price now is thirty-one dollars more than it was at the beginning of the plan, and they've had my money all this six months. So, like, well, I'm that's wondering, a, you know, that that's investing in stock. Sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down, right? It's the risk you take, I guess. But you've been, but you've been as long as you've been investing, it's just gone up fairly steadily over the years. But yeah. certainly during this one-year look back or the six-month look back. Uh, which gives you the benefit of either price, correct? No, it does not. That's what I mean. Oh, it they eliminated really, that. They eliminated the oh, Okay, so you're stuck with the price is the price is the price. So right. here's the thing. Here's the thing. How we got here doesn't matter to make this decision. Right. The way we make this decision is what are we going to do going forward? So how much money is in this company stock? What's it worth? It's about 15000 Okay, not a lot of money. All right. No. So let's put fifteen thousand dollars cash in the middle of your kitchen table. Do you see those hundred dollar bills laying there in your mind right now? Oh yeah. Okay. Now, <laughs> and let's look at your stock price today. What it is today, yeah. and you know some things about this company because you've been around it a long, long time. Mm-hmm. Are do you want to invest fifteen thousand dollars into this company, and do you want to continue to invest in it monthly? on a purchase monthly purchase plan based on what you think it's going to do going forward. Going forward is the only thing we can make the decision based on. The past is um, it's worthless except to help us predict yeah, the right. future. So what do you want right, to do? You're gonna, are you going to buy more or are you going to buy less? Um, I don't think I'm going to buy more. I think I actually a great idea for a friend suggested since I give to my churches, I tithe to my church. Um, I'm going to take some of it and give it uh, so it'll have no tax. No. Yeah, that's a good way to do it. You can do a stepped-up basis on that gift and um, to the value, and that'll give you a great write-off. That's a good use for it. Uh, some charity work with it is wonderful. Well, you're sharp. You're on top of it. You're going to make a good decision. I trust your decision, and I think it's going to be fine. And the 15000 is not bothering me a bit one way or the other. I think you're going to be okay.
If you're not using Pure Talk for your wireless, you're paying too much. Pure Talk gives you the same great 5G coverage on the same 5G network as one of the big guys for half the cost. The average family saves over $800 a year. Go to puretalk.com and choose the affordable plan that's right for you. With their 30-day risk-free guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Go to puretalk.com and enter the promo code RAMSEY to save 50% off your first month. Ramsey personality is my co-host today as we talk about your life and your money. Time for a debt-free scream, at least according to my screen. That's what it says. Steve and Vicky are on the line from Olympia, Olympia, Washington. Hey, guys, congratulations on your debt freedom. How much did you pay off? Uh, we paid off $96,714. Way to go. How long did this take you? 24 months. 24 months. And your range of income during that time? Uh, we started out at 140, went up to 170, and we're back down to 140. Cool. What do y'all do for a living? I'm a registered nurse. Yeah, I'm a mechanic. All right. Very cool. What kind of debt was your 97000 It was our house. Yay! Hey! All right. Talking to some weird people. I love <laughs> yeah. it. Way to go, you guys. What's this house worth? Uh, probably five fifty, six hundred, maybe. <laughs> wow! I love it, and it's all yours. It's all yeah. ours. Yeah. How does it feel to not have any payments in the whole world? It's crazy. Yeah, it's amazing. And Wait, you, I, th I thought people who paid off their houses were all uh, rock stars and movie stars, not mechanics and nurses. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> does that feel weird? Yep. Um, yeah, the first the first month with no house payment was like, what do we do with all of this? And then, of course, <laughs> we hooked up with the SmartVestor Pro, and we're ready for retirement now. Wow. Hedy, uh, so how much have you got in retirement now? Oh, not enough. We have a lot of work to do, but we're going to catch up. We have lots of time. We're uh, I'm 50, and he's 51. So. Oh, you got plenty of time. You're going to do yep. just fine. Okay. All right, so now you fill that up and you become everyday millionaires or, or baby step millionaires, right? That's right. Yeah. I like it. Congratulations, you guys. So yeah, very we cool. Wanted, and we wanted to say thank you for being there. <laughs> you made it all really happen. Well, we, we're honored. I appreciate that. You made it happen. I just showed you how. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> so tell us the story. What got all this started 24 months ago? Oh, goodness. It started a little bit before 24 months ago. I had finally, after 19 years, paid my master's degree off. And um, the month after I paid it off, my friend was here from uh, San Antonio, and she asked if I'd heard of you. And I said, oh, yeah, I listen to him when I'm mowing the lawn. I listen to his podcast. But, you know, he doesn't really doesn't really matter to us. We don't really owe anything except our house. And... Uh, and she said, well, my husband and I just paid off our house. Why don't you take Financial Peace University and, and do that, too? And I thought, oh, my gosh, we could pay our house off. <laughs> my friends challenged me to drink another beer, and your friend challenged you to pay your house off. It's amazing. <laughs> wow. So we, we enrolled in Financial Peace University and followed the steps, and, and it was just like you say, it was game on. We were ready, and we lit it up and did it. I love it. You guys are amazing. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Wow. All right. Now that people hear this, and they just showed your, your crazy-looking chart. I love it. <laughs> I love your chart on the YouTube channel. And, um, and beautiful mind stuff going on there. <laughs> and uh, so when people see that and they hear you paid off your house, and you're 50 years old, and you're a nurse and a mechanic, and, you know, you make 140 to 170 to 140. What do you tell them the key to getting out of debt is? How did you do this? Stay focused and believe that you can do it. 
<laughs> yeah, and and I think also that budget. Oh goodness sakes, oh, was that budget? Uh, you know, it it was hard for a while. It was you know we can't afford that, we can't afford that. But you know what? Now we can. So it was totally worth. It was worth the work for sure. No, the truth is you could afford it, but you couldn't afford it and hit something that was more important to you. That's right. You're right. Yeah, you were making choices, intentional choices. Yes. And that, that's the power of this. The budget just doesn't tell you what to do. It just makes you realize what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. you're absolutely yeah. right. I love it. I'm so proud of you guys. You're amazing. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now that the house is paid off, you went and saw the Smart Investor Pro, you're going to start saving for retirement. But what's the first big thing you're going to do to celebrate? haven't even gotten that far yet i'm looking at him going well we just put a new propane stove in the house i mean I oh you so ce- you celebrate big <laughs> Come you go on. big girl i'm just telling you i got a stove yeah no that's not not what i'm talking about honey <laughs> uh, we'll plan something dave i promise all right i want you to have some fun i want you to do something to you know drive this stake in the ground and, and stop because you just did something very few people ever do and a whole lot of people don't even believe you can do. To Steve's point, uh, one of the big things you got to do to be able to pull this off is you have to actually believe you can do it. Right, right. Yeah, you guys are amazing. Well, we're going to send you a copy of the book, Baby Steps Millionaires, because that is definitely the next chapter in your story. You're going to be there before you know it with these numbers. This is pretty incredible. And uh, be able to retire with dignity and spend all of your 50s and the 60s and the rest of your life in a paid-for house. Life is really good. Also, send you a copy of the Total Money Makeover. You can give it away. And uh, you can be the friend that disrupts your friend when they're mowing the grass and says, (laughs) pay off your house. I like it. I like it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Way to go, you two. You're rock stars. You're heroes. Steve and Vicki, Olympia, Washington, 97000 paid off. That's house and everything at 50 years old. Did it in 24 months after they knocked off her master's degree. Debt and 140000 income to up to 170, back to 140. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, one. We're debt-free. Yeah. <laughs> Boom! Just like that, a half a million dollar paid for house. And again, as I'm just thinking of this as a citizen, Dave, I want my mechanic to not have a house payment. I like it because then when I pull in and the mechanic can say, "You don't need that, man," <laughs> and he's not thinking, uh, "You know, it really help my house payment." You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I've I've accused lawyers of trying to fund their kids' college. <laughs> Oh, man. Fund off of lawyer fees. Oh, my gosh. I yeah. just, I love it, man. Yeah, we're not getting anything done here but sending the lawyer's kids to college. That's I've said that a bunch. <laughs> you know, so it's, uh, yeah, it's it's a real thing, man. It's <laughs> so great. I'm a nurse with, and if, for, what, if you're sitting out there thinking, well, I'm just a fill-in-the-blank job, mm-hmm. right? I'm just a teacher. I'm just a, just a mechanic. I'm just a nurse. I can't, you can't. No, oh, you definitely can't. A half a million dollar house that they don't owe anybody anything for. Boom, 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 boom. And I got to tell you, man, there I, I'm, I'm going to turn into a positive thinking junkie before this is over. Mm. This whole thing of if you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. You're right. The Henry Ford quote, yeah. the power of belief, yeah. the power of faith is scriptural. Uh, it lines up, and, it, and it's the opposite of what everything on the Internet is telling you right now about your life. They tell you you can't do anything. Mm-hmm. Everywhere there's hate. Everywhere there's toxins flying around in the mental space. Mm-hmm. And you've got to be careful. If you keep feeding your brain manure, your brain's going to be manure because it's garbage in, and your garbage out. Your body will be manure. Your relationships, your work will be manure. Everything will be. And, and the opposite of that is what was the key to getting out of debt, Steve? Believe. You gotta believe. Yeah. What's the key to becoming a baby steps millionaire? Well, you can't do it because of racism. You can't do it because of sexism. Mm-hmm. You can't do it because the rich inherit all the money. Only wealthy people, only believe to give me millionaires inherit money. Which means you don't know nothing about nothing when you say stupid stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Because it indicates that you don't understand the power of belief, number one. And the data, just the facts. The data, the data is there to tell you very, very clearly that you're wrong. But and we've got all the proof here, and we put it all in the Baby Steps Millionaire's book that's coming out next week to prove it to you. But I did a whole chapter in there on belief because of this, because it gets so jacked up that, it, you know, 
You know why the second million you ever heard making the second million is easier than the first? Because you know you can. Because you did it. Yeah. You know, it's like riding a bike the second time. Huh. First time you rode it, you're like, oh my God. <laughs> the second time you're like, oh, I've done it before. Yeah. Same thing. Same exact thing, baby. Way to go, Steve and Vicky. It's awesome. They're going to be so wealthy. <laughs> what great people, too. This is the Ramsey Show. John Deloney Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Kelly, was it 58 million that we had paid off in debt free screams last year? I was doing that from memory. Yeah. Okay. Last year on the air, we had $58 million worth of debt free screams. Uh, as of our last debt free scream moments ago, we uh, broke the first million for this year. Hmm. Million eighty nine thousand so far this year already. Wow! And we've been on the air three days. <laughs> there we go. So uh, just let you know we're going to beat fifty eight million next yes, year at that, at that rate. So just just go ahead and Kelly set yourself a goal. We got to we got to break sixty million, and it's on you to make that happen. So yes. She lines up the debt free scream. So if she just makes sure it happens, I like what just happened there. That's that's pretty good. It's delegation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is I just turned her loose too oh, so just yes, keep that true. in mind open phones at 888-825-5225 alex is in houston texas hey alex what's up hey nothing much dave and john hey so i've got this question that i i haven't been able to find a good answer to um and essentially it has to do with um early retirement and how best to fund that via mutual funds or or however that best looks as to be able to access it you know when you're 50 55 um, oh, so you'll need an income active. prior to the 59 and a half to be able to cash out your other stuff. Yes, sir. Gotcha. Okay. How old are you now? Uh, well, I'm 26 right now. Okay. And um, so you are debt-free? Debt-free. Um, currently cash flowing my wife's college, but trying to get a few things lined up uh, once that's over and, and kind of hit the ground running. Okay. Well, my point is I want you to work the baby steps before you worry about the answer to this question so that this this discussion is fine to have, but I want it to be a little bit theoretical for right now, okay? Okay. I don't want you to take your eye off the ball and go work on this stuff we're getting ready to talk about until you've worked the baby steps. In other words, you've, you're jacking up your regular retirement first. Because we don't need to talk about retiring early and you have no money in your 401k or Roth IRAs. You follow me? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, two ways that you can do that. Once you are debt-free, house and everything, and you're starting to really load up your regular retirement funds and, and you want to do some additional investing that you can access earlier before 59 and a half. One is you can begin to save and pay cash for real estate. And obviously, real estate throws off an income from the first day if it's income-producing real estate, which is the only kind I'm suggesting right now. But you save up and buy a rental house. You save up and buy a, uh, a small apartment complex or a little office building or something. Uh, and you begin to work that way. That is obviously money you can access at any time. Uh, and you, you have to access it, the rent that comes off of it. It's not optional. Um, the second thing you can do is you can invest in uh, what are called low turnover mutual funds. Now, the way a low turnover mutual fund works is they don't turn the stocks in the mutual fund over. They don't sell anything. It's a buy-hold strategy by and large. So if you have a 5% turnover ratio, that means they only sell 5% of the holdings a year. Does that make sense? 
Yes, sir. And that if it if they don't sell it and you don't sell it, it's a capital gains growth, meaning that you have the growth, but you don't pay any taxes on it until you actually sell some of it. So an example of that that's easy to do is an S and P five hundred index fund. And so I dump some money in an S&P 500 index fund almost every month. I've got a good deal in there uh, as my overflow funds because that money then grows and I don't pay any taxes on the growth or hardly any until I actually pull it out and use it. And if I've left it in there at least a year, when I pull it out and use it, I pay capital gains rate on the taxes rather than ordinary income rate on my taxes. So in, in most people's cases, that'd be 15% instead of 30 or 40% or whatever your tax rate is, okay? My case, I make too much money, so my capital gains is way more than 15%. But, because um, so, I'm rich and I must be punished, and that's how that's how the thing works these days. But uh, but anyway, the, 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 the point being that you're getting two benefits here. One, you're not paying taxes until you take it out, and then... B, when you do take it out, you're paying less taxes. Okay? So the low turnover right. mutual fund works. It doesn't matter how much you take out. Exactly. Sorry. Whatever you take out is going to be taxable on the gain. So it works, okay. like, it works like this. The easy way to remember it is let's just take a single stock. Let's say you bought a stock of uh, a share of Home Depot. And I don't even know what Home Depot sells for. Okay? I'm just making this up. But um, you bought it for $50. And next year, it's worth $60. You do not pay any taxes on that $10 in gain unless you sell that stock, and you'll pay taxes on that $10 then. But if you hold it 10 years, and it goes up from $50 to $150, you don't pay taxes on that $100 gain until you sell that stock. And what we're doing inside that low turnover mutual fund is there's a whole bunch of Home Depots in there. They're just holding them all. And they're all going up, 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 and you're not selling them. And so you're getting the value going up without paying any taxes until you do sell it, and you only pay taxes on the amount it went up and the amount you sell, and it's only at capital gains rate. So it's at a reduced rate, and it is uh, gives you a delayed uh, tax-deferred growth, a capital gains growth on it. And that's that's what a whole lot of people do for their what we call bridge uh, investing to make the bridge between 50 and 59 and a half work. Dave, I hear this question a lot from people in the early 20s. What do I have to do to be able to retire sooner rather than later? My initial pushback on that question is always, why are you already planning on, why, what is it about the life you're setting up for yourself that you can't wait to do something else with it? Yeah. And agreed. Is, is that agreed? Am I off? Because there's something about like, man, if you love coaching, then be the best coach you can be and love coaching. And I don't, I don't have any plans to quote unquote do nothing. You know what I mean? That's not one of my life goals. Yeah. I like, I like what I do. I've it, always liked what I do. To your point, if that young man is uh, wanting to do this, his motivation is because he hates his job today. Right. But go ahead and change job. Get a new job, man. Yeah. 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 Go and get Ken Coleman's book paycheck to purpose yes. and start making plans to go do something you love and you'll make more money anyway so uh, if you're doing something you love if that's the point i have already done the flip and sometimes it's wrong when i've done it because i'm when i hear people say retire what they're really saying is i want wealth that i can uh, act, i want to be able to access some of my wealth there you go okay before i'm 60 gotcha before i'm 59 and a half and so that's how i interpreted the question okay and, and if i was wrong and you were right then your advice is actually correct because i don't know i didn't ask him that i didn't but, think i didn't even think about that question but that's, that's i just i just flip you know how can i get to some of my money before i'm 60 uh, okay because uh, i don't want it all kind of trapped over there yep. in retirement and he's already he's he's running spreadsheets this guy's running spreadsheets. <laughs> that's he's, exactly right he's, he's, he's 26 and he's projecting he's yes. nerding out right yes. and because uh, i know him because i do it all the time so right. i did it all the time when i was his how, age. how quick can i get out of this this quote-unquote life thing right and I yeah can well go... how, how quick can i get to make get access to some of this money the live like no one else portion of Dave's saying, yes, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. If that's what he's saying, then I'm Love fine it. with it. But if he's saying, oh, I hate my job and I can't wait to figure out a way to not have to do it anymore, mm -hmm. that's what retirement means. That's when I look at the retirement data, and that's when people just die, yeah. right? Or yeah. their bodies fall apart yeah. on them. And, and so it's time to go ahead and start doing something Set you up love. a life you love, yeah. yeah set, set up some, and you don't have to make less money to do it no. either. You just get Ken Coleman's book, and you yeah. learn the clear path that he's got there. It's very clear yeah. on exactly what to do. We talk about it on the Ramsey Show all the time. But you're, you're exactly right. So 
It's uh, you I hadn't know, thought about that. When Chris, how much Hogan, money when Chris Hogan was Ramsey personality and did that book, Retire Inspired, uh -huh. we kept dealing with that a lot. That you know, one of the things Chris used to say is beautiful saying, and I'll steal it. Uh, it is uh, uh, retirement is not an age; it's a, it's number. a number. Yeah, yeah. And and really, what we're saying there is wealth is a number. Yeah, gotcha. It, ac accessible wealth. Accessible that yeah. I can get my hands on. So it's a good good clarification. Good question, a good thing man. to talk through. Love it, love it, love it. Open phones at triple eight eight two five five two two five. That puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. Kelly, associate producer and phone screener for The Ramsey Show. If you would like to do your debt-free screen live on the show, make sure you visit theramseyshow.com and register. We would love for you to come to Nashville and tell Dave your story. This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. You jump in, we'll talk about your life and your money. Open phones at 888 825 That's 888 825 Two two five. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, as I said, is my co-host. He is the best-selling author of the book Redefining Anxiety. Also, host of uh, the most popular and exploding podcast around here, other than this one at the Ramsey Networks, called the John Del Dr. John Deloney Show, I know. where we talk about relationships and boundaries and all kinds of fun stuff and some of it's a little crazy but most of it's just regular people trying to figure out how to make their way through life i, I think what i'm finding out personally is the convergence of the things that i thought were crazy is it's everybody's going through something yeah everybody's going through something yeah there's there's some stuff out there but i mean some of the topics are weird yeah yeah but most of them are just like yeah i kind of get that and me too so tell me about that john you know <laughs> exactly yep. yeah so speaking of which we always say around here that Personal finance is 80% behavior. It's only 20% head knowledge. So I stumbled into the fact, I backed into the fact 20 years ago in this 30-year journey that if you don't have your marriage working on the same page, the chances of you becoming wealthy and getting out of debt are very low. Mm. It's worse than that. Yep. If you aren't controlling your behaviors... Your maturity level is not increasing emotionally, spiritually. Your ability to build wealth and hold on to it is ridiculously low. Right. And actual data points to that. The extreme of that is I have worked in the financial crisis world now, off and on, or, you know, indirectly, directly, for 30 years. And 100% of the addicts, that I have ever met end up broke. It's just a matter of when. They either break away from the addiction and the behaviors associated with it, or they end up broke because the addiction eats their life alive from the inside out. Hmm. It eats up all their relationships. It eats up all their money. It eats up their career and their ability to make money. Hmm. It eats up everything. Eventually, it, it takes hold, and it is the... God that demands minute by minute, day by day worship right. and steals your life from you. Yeah. Addictions are the extreme of misbehavior. Hmm. But 100% of the misbehavior, whatever we want to call that, if you want to uh, call it an old Christian word, we'll call it sin. Mm -hmm. If you want to call it just uh, things that don't help you personally, that are harming you personally, but feel good in the moment, then you get in all kinds of garbage here. Hmm. And so, and what we've seen is an explosion of those things, whether they're to the addiction level or not, 
uh, because of our access to the Internet and the resulting uh, industry explosions mm. around uh, gambling, yep. online gambling, number two addiction now in the world, wow. approaching number one, and destroying families for obvious reasons, destroying their finances for obvious reasons, uh, and uh, because it is the ultimate in arrogance that you think you're going to win. Right. And uh, number one addiction uh, porn yep. and online porn. I mean, when I was a little kid, porn was a, was a, a playboy hidden under a rock in the woods. Exactly. You know, uh, and, and are under somebody's, some kid's mattress in the neighborhood. Uh, that's not porn anymore. No. And every playboy ever printed is on somebody's cell phone right by their bedside table. Right. Well, and it's boring compared to right. uh, uh, the other stuff now. I mean, it's just bizarre. And, and let me just tell you guys, if you don't know this, it's the number one addiction, and more money is spent on pornography now in America hmm. than all professional sports, including NASCAR, combined. Hmm. More than spent on NFL tickets, NBA tickets, hmm. anything added together, and we know what it's doing to their lives. Right. We know. It's not just being a prude. Right. That's not the point. The point is there's a behavior mechanism here that is being destroyed in people's lives. And, and so when you pull up on the Internet, uh, we do e research here all the time on the Internet because we're always utilizing the Internet for marketing and for connecting to you guys for good stuff. But by far, 5X, the number one search is porn. Yep. By far. And the first 50 things that are searched on the Internet, almost none of them have anything to do with you winning. All right. Are you doing anything? You doing anything. They're all you controlling you. They're it's all Joe distancing. Biden, Donald Trump. Yeah. Misspellings of Joe Biden made the top fifty. <laughs> now that's funny. I don't care who you are. Uh, the uh, uh, you know, porn, triple X, free porn, NFL gambling, scores, yeah. gambling scores, uh, NBA scores. Uh, in a, uh, uh, college football scores, nothing wrong watching football, nothing yeah. wrong with it, you know, w with some of this, uh, but, but you, it's all about you escaping somewhere, watching someone else be successful. That's right. I will never forget. I went to see a, a I forgot the movie. It was a jazz movie. Uh, James probably knows what it is. Um, La La Land. Yeah. And I went and saw the movies, beautiful movies. It was great with me and my wife. And I walked out and I was walking towards our car in the park lot and I thought, I just spent 30 bucks and two hours of my life to watch another couple go have a romantic arc in jazz clubs and dancing when I could have just taken my wife dancing. And I m never forget thinking, I'm outsourcing. Why don't I go get a group of guys to go play basketball? Why do I pay money to watch other people play? I don't even know them. Why would I put another man's jersey on my back? That doesn't make sense. Get some guys to go play softball. And I realized in on the way to my car out of that park, out of that movie theater, I'm outsourcing my entire life. Pornography is just an outsource of intimacy. Opioids is an outsourcing, right? It just keeps going and going and going. And at some point, we have to plug back in. Or the teeter-totter hits for us, right? The economy collapses. We're going to have to stare each other in the face and be like, oh, hey, I haven't seen you in a while, right? We're going to have to deal with it at some point. And, man, if we could plug back into our own lives, man, what would that be like? Yeah. So don't watch a fishing show. Go fishing, right? Yeah. Go fishing. Don't go watch a golfing don't show. Watch, don't watch golf as a principal. Please, just to, in general, don't watch golf. But, but go outside. Go play golf. Go, go play golf. Go play. I know you yeah. suck at it. I do too. Go Damn, play golf. I'm not good at golf. Go play golf. <laughs> I'm not good at golf. No, I, I suck. I'm saying. I'm talking to the people out there. You're really at. good. I'm not. I'm not that good. But they. They. they I mean, I've just learned how to play. But the, uh, you know, what I'm saying? like, like yeah, it's but, this. But go out, learn how to play. Do, do I mean, something. You know, instead of spending eight million dollars on a five thousand square inch television, yeah, put a golf simulator in your basement. Yes. Which, by the way, one of our guys here did the other day. Built it out himself. Wow. So. The point being, guys, you, you, you think you can separate these behaviors or these misbehaviors from your lack of success in your money and your career, and you can't. They're the cause. It's all intertwined. They're the cause. That's how it works. So you're not going to win if you keep uh, misbehaving. I'll just leave it at that. If you keep running from your life. Yeah, don't outsource. Wow, that's good. I like that. That's a good word. Don't outsource. This is The Ramsey Show.
Still on baby step number one, eh? How'd you guess? With healthcare costs rising, learn how Christian Healthcare Ministries can help you make the most out of your budget. Visit chministries.org slash budget. Don't worry, it's worth it. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. One week from Thursday, just nine days away, on January the 13th, we have a huge event called Building Wealth in 2022. The event is sold out. Over 1,500 people will be joining us live in the audience. And, of course, in addition to that, we're going to offer it now, since it's sold out, as a free live stream and over 60,000 of you have signed up for the free live stream. It's going to be me speaking about wealth building in 2022. Rachel Cruz will be with me. George Camel will be with me. And we're going to talk about not only some of the things that are going on out there in the real world today, like what is the real story on crypto? What is the real story on nothing down real estate? What's the real story on NFTs? What's the real story? And what's the real story on how to really, really build wealth? And we're going to unpack that for you, and you really ought to tune in. Again, it's a free event this next Thursday night, one week from tomorrow for most of you, January the 13th. Don't miss the opportunity. If you want to register for the free live stream, which is the only way to watch it, go to RamseySolutions.com slash wealth, RamseySolutions.com slash wealth. And, of course, next week is the week we also launch the new book, Baby Steps Millionaires. And you can still get it on pre-sale at Ramsey Solutions while you're there at 20 bucks. Andrea is with us in Denver. Hi, Andrea. How are you? Hi, good. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? Thanks for taking my question. I'm a little nervous, so bear with me. No troubles. Um, so my husband and I started Baby Step 2, and since mid-October, we paid off um, fifteen grand on one debt, which is uh, my car. Very good. But the baby steps have caused us to look at our mortgage, and we realize that we're just over that 25% mark, but on a 30-year. Mm-hmm. And even before this, he and I have been going back and forth, and we just cannot seem to make a decision on whether we actually want to stay in this house because um, we're a little bit scared of the real estate market. But some of the things that we go back and forth on is we own a little bit of land, um, which he believes it might be a good investment um, for development down the road. Um, but one of the other things is we're also 30 minutes away from everything in town. Um, and to make the house what we really want, we would have to put about $160,000 into it. Um, and so we're just kind of stuck on, on what to do. And I, I wanted to get your advice. Mm. What's your household income? It's 110 right now. Mm-hmm. Okay, the way you said right now makes me think it's going to change. Yes, he's looking into, he's in law enforcement. He's looking to promote, which would add about $20,000 um, mm-hmm. to the income. And that would be, which would make you easily, time, which, is, which make you easily within your 25% then. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure what a 25% would be on a 15 year. Yeah, close enough though. I mean, you're not going to be far off. Okay. So, okay. okay. So then the question comes, where do you want to live and when? Yeah. I, I hear this yeah. is less of, of a confusion. You want to move and he doesn't. That's what it is. Sounds like. <laughs> That's a little bit of what's, what's there. Yes. So it sounds like it's all of it. What's there. Um, yeah, I go back and forth a lot. Um, Some days I really want to move and be closer to town because I'm driving my kids back and forth between school and activities. I feel like I'm in the car, you know, a couple hours every day. So the piece of land is, uh, you own it free and clear? No, we owe uh, 360 on it. Oh, how much much acreage is it? um, It's 13 acres. It's right outside of a little town that's really developing, um, really kicked up development. So and do we you are want to live on that land? Um, like I said, I really go back and forth. We're in a <laughs> no, 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 no. I didn't ask about it. I, it was a, it's an easy question. You don't go back and forth because is it closer to town or further from town? 
It's 30 minutes away from our church, school, and our family. What are you so now? I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm 30 minutes away from that. We have a tiny little town that doesn't so have a lot of So you're an hour amenities. out now, and this makes you 30 minutes out? No, you're 30, no, 30 minutes out, and this makes you three minutes out. Three? So we are 30 minutes away from everything, like our school and our church. Today. But yes. there is a small t- Today, yes. Okay, what would you be um, if you were on the land? It is the 30 minutes. I'm the so the town, they're, um, they're both I'm 30 sorry. minutes away they're, from everything? No, the town that's developing, it's about five minutes from here. But right now, we don't have the school and the church and everything else. So they're just now kicking up development, which is why my husband would like to stay on it until development comes our way. And are he you, feels like are he you would be on a good the property investment. now? We are on the property now, yes. Oh, that's why I was confused. <laughs> I thought it was two pieces of property. You live on the 13 no. acres. Yes. Oh, crap. Okay. Here's where I'm confused. <clears throat> Move no. to town. Yeah. Sell it. Why won't you just say what you want to do? Something is keeping you from saying what you really want to do. Well, her husband thinks he's a big-time real estate developer, and she doesn't want to spoil his dream. That is true. Yes. <laughs> There is a big, and that, she's that sick of driving kids of through traffic because he wants to develop something that's probably about five years too early. Way too early. And if he had three hundred sixty thousand dollars in cash to buy it, I'd say buy it. But he doesn't. So no, you you're sell it. you're in debt, sitting or you're playing real estate speculator instead of building a home. Or everything slows down in this little tiny town out there, just goes kaput for the next fifteen years and sits, and y'all are on a worthless Stop. piece of land. Yeah, sell it. Yeah, sell it. Move. Enjoy your life. Yeah. Like it, it sounds easier. What's the it hang? Hadn't got to do, it hadn't got anything to do with the twenty five percent issue, though. Yes, it's got to do with you don't want to live there. And you're trying to come up with math reasons to tell your husband why you want to move. Is that fair? Um, I think that the twenty five percent thing just made us go relook everything. There you go. Okay. Um, okay. Well, yeah. it, it's tight, and it's far away. Yes. Okay, mm-hmm. and and the, that's on one side of the scale. On the other side of the scale is we might make a bunch of money if we split this up into lots someday. Yeah, mm-hmm. but you're not real estate developers. You're building a family right now, and you're in law enforcement. Don't be a real estate developer. Yeah. Move. Okay. It's just there's we a lot. Listen, real estate development's a pain in the butt. I do a bunch of it. It's a pain in the butt. You're dealing with city people and codes people and planning people and. Oh my God! It'll make you want to shoot yourself. It's and then um, all of a sudden there's a rock underneath your drill. <laughs> you're digging it. Oh, <laughs> when you hear that sound, it's fifteen hundred bucks an hour. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, I'm in Tennessee where there's a lot of rock, but oh, yeah, man. yeah. This is you're trying to combine two many different things here. Yeah. Um, you caught that, John. Good catch. And trying to use one set of metrics to just say what's in your heart, and what's in your heart is you want to move. Yeah, yeah. If you bought the exact same math closer to town i'll be okay with it yeah because his income the life up. you want yeah his income's going up and you got your life back you're not driving 30 minutes to everything yeah, yeah you're um you moved out to the country dun, 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 <laughs> and uh time to move back to town that's it it's not as much fun as it sounds i moved out to the country into this nice subdivision but uh-huh. it's way out in the middle of nowhere and i feel like country people might you know when i was a kid Country, my family and stuff, they'd be like, we have to get a list because we're going to get, you know, getting a trip up to town. Oh, uh, hey. Got to get ready to go to town. I live out in the woods and that's. You have to get ready to go. To, you have to get ready to go do something. We're going to like going to the market's an event. Yeah. And the fact that I just said to the market makes me feel like that's like I've been there too you're, long. Yeah, man. You're, you opened your mouth. Your old man just came out. <laughs> exactly. You don't yeah. go to the grocery store when you live out there. Dun, 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 dun. You'll load the kids up. Man, and- I'm telling you. Yeah, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But I I did not anticipate that part of this last move. Yeah. Because that that home we had was was too much, and it was a great opportunity to sell it. But it was right in the middle of everything. Yeah. I mean, I could just, you know, like fall off the hill of the house, and I was right in the middle of everything. No, I'm pl- not now. I planned my gas station no. trips. No. And- the only thing I'm close to now is this office. <laughs> I just come to work a lot. <laughs> oh. and we all love that, everybody, don't we? Yes, we do. <laughs> don't be sarcastic about working here. Come on, man. No, I, love, for- I love working here. No, also, I'm just kidding. I, I love it. I love every second of it. You just had to do the old job thing. That's what you had. It's just classic. It's a throwback. Oh, my gosh. This is The Ramsey Show.
John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Maggie and Curtis are with us in Cincinnati. It says on my screen, you guys are debt-free. Congratulations. Thank Thank you. you. Welcome. How much did you pay off? We paid off $63,989. Excellent. How long did that take? 15 months. Wow. And your range of income during that time? Uh, we made about uh, 90 and ended at 100. Cool. What do y'all do for a living? I am a uh, skincare and beauty specialist for mm-hmm. a major cosmetics company. And when we started our debt free journey, I picked up freelance makeup artistry. And I also stay at home during the day with our three kids. Cool. Good for you. Oh, that's cool. And I am a plant supervisor at our water treatment plant here. Very good. You have the best skin of any of you and your coworkers, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> oh my gosh! All right. So, how? What kind of debt was the sixty-four thousand? It was um, credit card debt and student loans. Okay. All right. So you're kind of normal. No car payment. No car payment. Uh, That's well, good. Luckily, those are kind of old and have been paid off for a while. <laughs> I got it. Okay. All right. So what happened 15 months ago that started you guys on this Ramsey journey? Yeah. So um, we knew a few people who spoke highly of uh, Financial Peace University. And so we actually attended one at a church a few years ago. And um, Curtis was the one who got hooked on it. And it really got to the point where I, I thought you had moved into our house, Dave. I mean, your podcast was on 24-7. I'm sorry. Whether we were at home in the car cleaning, it Curtis. didn't matter. You were on. Um, he's read every single book. I mean, it was literally like you were a roommate, but you were living rent-free. So a roommate from hell, though. Yeah. <laughs> And so uh, during that time of him being all in with it, I actually had some debt that he did not know about. Uh-oh. So, yeah, we we really weren't making much progress. And so I had been hiding some credit card debt from my past, and I thought I could handle it on my own. I saw it as my problem to deal with, and, you know, I was embarrassed about it. So once I became honest with him about it, we were able to work as a team, track what we were doing in every dollar. We were winning with the debt snowball, the magic really started to happen and 15 months later here we are well, I, I can see if you're hiding that how me being everywhere on every coffee table you could really <laughs> resent dave ramsey yeah yeah i don't blame you i understand that so how much credit card debt were you hiding uh it was about thirty thousand. whoa Ooh. from from uh how long have y'all been married so Uh-oh. Actually, it's our um, 10-year anniversary today. Okay. Happy anniversary. Um, so you've been hiding you. this You've been hiding this inside the marriage for a long time. Yeah. Tell me about the conversation when you finally came clean. What was that like? That had to it, be so scary. It was scary. hard. That had to be yeah, scary. Yeah, it was, it was hard. He, he knew about some of it, but I just wasn't honest about the amount, yeah. how much it was. So he saw that we were making payments on the credit cards, but he didn't know that it wasn't paying the balance down. And so I was trying to pick up what was left of it. And I just, I couldn't keep up with it and um, started to notice just my, my attitude um, was different just around the house and around him. And, you know, any conversation about money, I just like ran away from. Secrets will take your soul, right? Yeah. 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 So I think um, reached a breaking point and it was a really hard conversation, a lot of tears, um, but happy, happy we did it. Good for you guys. Curtis, what's it feel like when your wife sits down and says, I have $30,000 worth of credit card debt I've been lying about? Oh, uh, it, it, it knocked the wind out of me. I, I, when we first, after FPU, um, I, and we started on this, I could kind of tell she was holding back for some reason and I couldn't figure it out and I think after we paid off a credit card that I did know about and I was kind of excited about the progress we made and the extra money we could snowball into the next debt that's when she broke down and it all it all came out and uh 
it, it took a couple weeks to kind of recover and, and uh, kind of go from there and actually devote ourselves to the plan and her actually finally being all in with the plan. Yeah. And that was Maggie Curtis doesn't sound like the kind of guy that blows up when you got this information. He just kind of looked at you sad. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. He, he's a a man of few words, but uh, I don't want to make him angry. (laughs) Okay. Was he angry that night? Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, we, we always, we say around here, you get to a point where you can't, you can't, you can't just do away with what happened yesterday. All you can do is deal with the moment right now and deal with what tomorrow's going to look like. And so uh, it took a long time, and I wish it hadn't got there, but I'm proud of you for saying enough enough. I got to tell you, I, I, I admire it, your courage, Maggie. It's bravery, uh, yep. Not only to, to sit down and do that, but also to tell the story right now yeah. because yeah. The, it's so valuable. You don't know how many people you're helping at this moment telling this story Untold because it is, it's somewhere around 30 to 35% of spouses are hiding debt from their that's one one out of three marriages are hiding debt and it's just it's it's it eats your soul up inside it's your stomach up you you're walking ulcer and and curtis can't figure out what's wrong why he can't connect why is why isn't why is he failing as a husband why he can't get this moving why this relationship thing's not working and then she comes clean and goes oh now i understand i'm a killer but i'm gonna understand you know and then fast forward and now you're completely debt free what does that feel like you did that together wow so powerful yeah, I mean it it feels incredible to just be able to, you know, make purchases and not have to worry about it. I mean, Curtis uh right afterwards when we made the last payment um that week he was like, "Man, I, I feel a little bit taller." And no hmm. joke, tons of people started commenting at um just how tall he looked. <laughs> I, I felt like I was I felt like I was standing two inches taller. Yeah. Wow. You were. I, literally. Well you're not carrying all this sixty thousand bucks around on your back. Yeah. yeah. And was, you're not carrying around the separation in your marriage. You're together and you've accomplished this great goal together, man. What a cool story. And a ten year anniversary. Woohoo! I love it. You guys are success, man. Well yeah. done. You're both incredible. Okay, so how much does the uh, makeup artist thing pay as a side gig? Did you do good with that? Yeah, so that was where um, the freelance makeup artistry that I was doing, where we had that jump in income. So that um, 10000 uh came from that. Okay, wow. wow. So you do well doing that. Okay. Not, yeah. a bad, not a bad side gig to have. Uh, if you can get the work, COVID has messed up a lot of the – event things out there obviously and so a lot of people aren't in the in that world that do anything around production including makeup um aren't haven't had the work that they used to have and uh i know we had a lady in here that they were doing a shoot and she said she hadn't worked hardly at all and she was happy to get the work to be in here and uh so very cool congratulations you guys wow what do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is so uh i think the biggest key, and we kind of talked about this earlier, was once everything was out in the open and we were actually working together, she wasn't holding back. Um, I, I really think that was a huge key, and our, our marriage is better because of it. Sure. Um, and personally, I, uh, I like she said, I listen to the show all the time. Anytime I hear one of your quotes or sayings or Bible verses, I actually have a huge list Uh in my phone. And sometimes I'll look to that for motivation. That's cool. Well, I'm honored. Thank you. We're going to send you a copy of Baby Steps Millionaire. That's the next chapter in your story. And, of course, a copy of Total Money Makeover so you can disrupt someone's life. (laughs) $64,000 paid off in 15 months, making $90 to $100. Maggie and Curtis, I'm so proud of both of you. You're amazing. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, one. We're debt-free. Yeah. Story. I love it. Neat people. It's awesome. This is the Ramsey Show.
Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Harrison's in Boone, North Carolina. Hi, Harrison. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. Hey, Dr. John. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Yeah, so I'm pretty dead set on trying to open up a gym in my town this year. I've got about $300,000 uh, set in investments and in savings. Uh, I'm 24. I'm totally debt-free. I have no credit card debt, no student loans, no car Where payments. Where the devil did you get $300,000 at 24 years old? <laughs> uh, well, I've been working hard, and when I was a teenager, I, I actually made some really smart investment decisions. And on top of that, uh, you know, my grandma passed away probably a year and a half ago, and I got about 50000 from that. Um, but everything else has just been plotting and scheming along the way, honestly. Wow. Good for you. That's amazing. <laughs> that's that's mind-blowing. Way yeah. to go. I'm so proud of you. Um, Thank you. And, and um, so you're going to open a gym. What are you going to spend to open the gym? Yeah, so right now I have a budget of 100000 but that comes down to my question. My question right now is should I bite the bullet and and sell off some of my investments and pay that capital gains tax or – should I borrow against my current investment assets and pay that borrowed money off as, you know, as soon as I possibly can? You should use the money from your investments or you should not do the deal. Okay. There's two benefits to that. There's three benefits to that. Benefit number one that you don't see coming, and I saw it coming because when I was your age, I went deeply in debt buying real estate, became a millionaire by the time I was 26. Okay, and then lost it all because I had too much debt. Um, so uh, uh, the the benefit that you don't realize, and I didn't realize it until I was in my thirties, because it was before then before I started doing it. When you start doing a business investment with money that you place an emotional value on, that's your investments. It's emotional for you to pull fifty or hundred thousand dollars out of those investments that you've. Uh, worked your way so hard up into. Would you agree with that statement? Uh, yeah, I would. It, yeah, here's what's weird is. Up. Here's what's weird is. You will get 20 to 30% more purchasing power using your money than you will borrowed money because you're a little bit pissed about using it. Mm. It hurts more than to use your money, than to use borrowed money, so you're more careful and wise with it, and you'll get a better buy. You'll go, you know what, I don't need that piece of equipment right now. Let's find out if this is going to work. I'll do that in my phase two. And by the way, you do need to open this gym in two phases. You don't need to just open it like you know what you're doing because you've never done this before. Because some of the things you think are going to work aren't going to work, and I don't want you spending a bunch of money on them until you've operated the gym a little while. Yeah, understood. Um, I'm right now. I I also work three jobs right now. I'm I'm a full time realtor, and then I have two other side jobs that bring in some extra cash on top of that. And I'd like to still be doing real estate as often as I can while I'm operating the gym. Uh, so I will kind of have those two means of income coming in, uh, which is kind of the entire reason I thought about potentially borrowing the cash in the first place and nope. I would have a means to pay nope. off quickly. Nope. If you're not willing to put your money in it, don't do it. Yes, sir. It's a commitment thing, man. So number one is you're going to be wiser with the money. Number two is you're lowering your level of risk and your potential for success is increased on the gym because you don't have the strain of paying the note. Mm -hmm. You're 24, you made 300,000 bucks. That's unbelievably awesome. I love it. I'm happy for you. I'm proud of you. If you burn 100K of it and you screw this whole thing up, your life ain't over. It ain't even close to over. You still got 200 grand. You still got a wonderful thing ahead of you. And you still got that head on your shoulders, which is actually the secret sauce. I, yeah, you're right. I couldn't agree more. You're and with a $100,000 investment, that's going to buy you about seven dumbbells these days, right? <laughs> Maybe yeah. eight, eight, eight dumbbells with the price of gym equipment these days. Yeah, it's probably difficult to get this thing funded. Um, Real difficult, yeah. Yeah, I, I really would ease into this. I, I would open it uh, with a minimal version one 
with a plan that at six months I'm going to take it to version two and at six months more I'm going to take it to version three as I proof text, meaning I prove out some of the systems, processes, marketing that you're going to use in this thing. Because opening a gym in a, in a COVID environment is a, uh, it's a high risk environment, man. And, and buying it now and opening it in four months is going to put you behind the curve when people start even joining gyms, right? So is this something you can put off for a year, save a little bit more money or, or whatever that looks like? But yeah, before it's you just know, learning the business. You what, know what percentage of people are back? What percentage aren't in your area? I'd say I, my guess is Boone's pretty open. Uh, it's probably like our area. We're completely open as if nothing's going on in our area. Um, but, uh, but you know the the uh, the fear porn that's uh, surrounding COVID COVID that's out there that's being hammered out of D.C. and being hammered in the media because it's really good for the media to scare the crap out of you all the time helps their ratings. It's kind of like tornado warnings, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so yeah, you just you know you you got all of that. That's the same business environment you're operating in, and you don't want to add risk to that with debt. And uh, and you're in a high risk space. You're going into. Uh, I mean, the number of gyms that open and fail is almost all of them. In a good in a good year, you're in a, in a high-risk space. Yeah. I mean, it's like a restaurant business. It's a tough business. The last thing I'll tell you is this. I, uh, I understand your reasoning that you want to run the gym and stay in the real estate business. Running a business, starting a small business and running it that has a lot of hours of open to the public uh, is going to require your presence. It's going to require your focus. So... I don't think you're going to be doing a lot of real estate in the year you open the gym. I think you're going to be doing a lot of gym. I think you're going to be there a lot. You're going to be sweeping the floors. You're going to be setting up the chairs yeah. and resetting the dumbbells and sanitizing stuff. And you're going to be doing all, you're going to be working your butt off, man. And, uh, uh, you know, if you want to be in the real estate business, be in the real estate business, but I, I, anything with two heads is a monster. Bifurcating your focus is a good way to cause failure. So uh, I'm going to recommend you plan on doing very little real estate till you get that gym up and running. And it's making so much money that you can afford to put an operational manager in there where you don't have to be there all the time. But you can't do that till you get the thing running. It's up to you. This is your baby. You better rock it. And um, pay cash for it or don't do it. Thanks for the call. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Dr. John Deloney is here. We're talking relationships. We're talking money. John, this is a, um, you know, hey, uh, let's send him a copy of, uh, if he's still on the line, I think he is, send him a copy of Entree Leadership, and the, the, our, our, our playbook on how to run and start and run a small business, the way we run this one here, how we've grown this from a card table in my living room to where it is today. Mm-hmm. So th- this whole thing of uh, a, a guy that ticks like that, that's 24. Isn't that amazing? That, that's pretty cool. Yeah. He's a high performance guy. Yeah. He, he's a most stu- 24 year olds in the country don't know what capital gains are yeah yeah and uh, uh but he's running about three different angles here at all times and he's done something with the investing i didn't get into what it was that that worked um the danger having been that guy because mm-hmm. uh i'm a bit of a math math is my thing you know and so uh i was that guy i was way ahead of the curve when i was his age uh, thus, I was a millionaire by the time I was 26, and I had you know, hundreds of properties and so forth. Done probably today, I think I've owned over 2,000 pieces of real estate in my life. So, I mean, I was an early uh, adopter or early uh, whatever, perform, you know, or beyond my years or that kind of thing in the early days. And, uh, but there's something going on with that guy that uh, he's not only got an abundance mentality, but he's just gone. He, there, there's some extra motor running there. Yeah. And the challenge there is to not mistake your past success mm-hmm. for invincibility. Hubris. Right? Hubris. Yeah. Always stay home. Every new job, every new project, every new job, you start over with the humility at square one and build it back up. Yeah. Right? You're learning something new every time. Yeah. It's, it's going to take twice as long, cost twice as much. It may be a $100,000 lesson that he learns on this one and then you pick it up the next one or maybe he makes a million dollars and crushes it, man. Maybe he becomes the next um, whatever chain of gems. Yeah. It could happen. I hope so for him. Yeah, absolutely. That puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. I'm Dave Ramsey. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host. Have a 
friend or family member that needs a daily dose of Ramsey advice in their life? Let them know about the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast. It's a quick hit of advice about life and money in under 10 minutes. Check out the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. Thank you for joining us, America. We're glad you're here. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. This is a show where we talk about your work, your relationships, your life, and your money, and how they all work together whether you want them to or not open phones at 888-825-5225 Susie's in Minneapolis hi Susie welcome to the Ramsey show hi Dave and John thanks for taking my call sure what's up okay my 90 year old parents moved into an independent care apartment um their house that they have lived in for 65 years is now vacant um for the last year and a half mm. It's in their will that it would get divided up between six people. They currently don't need the money. Should we sell it now or wait? That's uh, an emotional thing, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. How long have they been in in, uh, the independent care? It's been a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Are they both, um, how how are they doing with their uh, cognitive? Are Are they both of right mind? Yes, they're, they have each other. So my dad, you know, watches out for my mom. They get along well. Mm -hmm. Um, the the other needs are met. What do they, what do they think about selling the home? Well, for the longest time, my dad never, you know, he bought it in 1955. He's Mm. doesn't want to sell. And now he's, they're realizing, of course, that they're never going to go back. Right. Um, so I don't think he wants to sell, but he's starting to think about it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, they don't need the money, so there's no hurry. And as long as they are capable of making the decision, it's their decision to make. Yes. And I would let him come to his own, come come to this conclusion on your, his own. It sounds like he's the kind of guy that just takes him a little while to come to the, it would take me a little while if I was him. Yeah. To come to the reality. Turning loose of that is like part of admitting you're you're not going to make it in this life. And by the way, that we all aren't going to make it. We know that. But you know, there, there's something emotional to, to that when he releases that. It's like it's like sitting down doing a will. It's like admitting I'm going to die. Uh huh. Is there one of the six who of your you know is there one of your brothers and sisters that is saying they want this house? When. Oh, no. Nobody wants the house. Okay. Okay. The one thing I don't like is people leaving real estate to multiple parties. I've never seen that not be a mess. Yeah, I'd go ahead and sell it as soon as he's able to do that emotionally. Okay. There's no. It's not doing anything. It's just sitting there. And as you said, the, the poignant words, but they're real words, is they're not going back there. Uh-huh. And just when you say that out, out loud, it hurts your heart a little bit. I don't even know you guys. Yeah. It hurts my heart a little yeah. bit. Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> Thank you know? You. But, uh, um, I mean, you know, it, it's just, that's what you're saying. You're saying dad and mom are going to die someday. Oh, my God. I don't want to say that out loud. But that's the truth. Yeah. And inside that house, is that for half a century, there's so many memories and joys and laughter yeah. and tears. That's hard. Yeah, it's very hard. It's a very hard, it's a very emotional decision as far as the real estate and the financial part of the decision. It's pretty simple. It's sitting there making no money. It's it's going to be a mess for the six of you to sell and have to deal with later after they pass. It's much cleaner for everyone if you go ahead in, in terms of the financial aspect to go ahead and sell it now. But I don't okay. want to walk through your grief with my muddy boots and say you have to do that instantaneously. 
Mm-hmm. So I would do it as soon as he is able. And in other words, Dad, when you're ready to sell it, I'm ready to help you. But I'm not going to push you, Dad, because I understand how much of your heart is in those hardwood floors. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of where it is right now. Yeah. But I'm going to ask you about it, Dad. Not I'm going to lovingly and kindly ask you about it to make sure you're processing this decision. But when you're ready, I'm ready to help you. And I'm going to cry just like you are. Okay. Yep. That, that's me talking to him if I'm you. Yep. Got it. Make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah. Let's get rid of it as soon as we can get the emotional part. The, the, the grieving of the that phase of life is never going to be again. There's never going to be another Christmas tree from your family in that living room. And, uh, boy, if I don't put a tear in your eye, I don't know who you are. Well, you there's know? Some, something about just saying that stuff out loud. Oh, man. Right? And you can feel it, and it's out there, but it's separate from you, and you get to, your well, body we do all this. It. We do all this macabre humor with my family. Yeah. You know, so, like, we have a meeting every year, the If Dave Dies meeting. <laughs> the When Dave Dies if, meeting. If Dave dies this year, here's what happens with the company. Here's what happens with the real estate. <laughs> here's where we are. It's, a, it's like a status quo. And if in the next 12 months, Dave dies, this is what it is. And I call it the Monty Python meeting. You know, <laughs> I'm feeling much better. <laughs> it's just a flesh wound, you know, but it I'm just makes you, it. it just makes you say out loud your mortality. Yeah. And just, man, it's, it's wicked weird. That's why I have to joke about it. Cause it's just awkward and uncomfortable. Oh yeah. I have to push it off with humor, but oh my gosh. But I, re- I remember when my granddad sold his home that he'd been in 40 50 years and he quietly sent checks to his kids Mm. and as as a this was going to happen then this happened i went ahead and took care of this now and there was something powerful and he was an engineer he's a pragmatic guy but it was something powerful about here's the reality that we're all facing and this was every bit of part of y'all's life as it was mine i went ahead and, and took care of this for you i took care of it and wow. exchanged cash in the driveway with some guy and it's just a cool story there and that and that's hard and it took years to get there but man it's but a it's, it's a it. uh you know i i knew a guy that was a pastor that was african-american guy that was a friend of my pastors and a friend of mine as well um my first pastor and and he turned I think he turned 88 or something like that. And he was driving to the grocery store and he realized that I'm that guy. I'm the slowest guy. I'm the old man in traffic. Oh no. (laughs) And I'm going to cause a wreck. Cause he said, I looked up and I realized on my way, you know, two miles to the grocery store and two miles back, I had swerved into the other lane twice. Uh. And he goes, I've become that old man. And he, and, and I thought it's the most manly thing I've ever heard anybody do huh. in, uh, that a man steps up at 88 years old and he dropped the keys in the bowl at his daughter's house. And he said, I'm not driving anymore. Sell the car. Wow. He said, I, he's self-aware. So self-aware. Imagine? But I mean, that's, that requires humility and vulnerability backbone, and strength. Yes. The level of courage yeah. to me, that was just like Conan, the barbarian dropping those keys in that bowl, yeah. man. That was just, um, because that that's a level of self-awareness very few people have well it's one step beyond that i think a lot of us have self-awareness we're honest with what we see in the mirror we know we but he went and did something about it and that's the well he's that's the and, next he, step. and he it was a permanent yeah it was I'm not done. like for the weekend I'm done it's not like i had too much to drink tonight yeah no it's like i'm never driving again in my life oh, man. that's a this is, this is the real stuff, you guys. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular, and roller shades 
shades or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit, whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com. going to be excited, but I am actually excited. I, I have a new book coming out. Congratulations, man. I haven't done a book in eight years, yeah. a major trade book. Uh, last one I did was Smart Money, Smart Kids with Rachel. I was in high school eight years ago, man. That's really, uh, not really. I just lied to you. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> I've told you a million times, quite exaggerating. Congratulations, the, uh, <laughs> man. I'm excited for you. <laughs> Thanks. I am excited. It's selling very, very well in pre-sale. It's going to be a bestseller, of course. And uh, Baby Steps Millionaires. What I'm really excited about it is I think I really did what I set out to do, which is make the case that if you're listening to the sound of my voice right now, you can be a millionaire and I can show you how. And not that being a millionaire matters, but being able to pay for, oh, I don't know, move into assisted living and not have to sell the house because you're broke. Yeah. You know, that matters. Yep. You know, that last call, right? Uh, that kind of thing. You got choices yeah. when you got some money. Or your spouse passes away and you don't, you can yeah. grieve and you can spend time. Well, and, and you can, you know, take all your grandkids and load them up and take them on a cruise. Yeah. And you can uh, buy a bunch of uh, food for hungry people. Yeah, and you right. can buy some shoes for people that don't have shoes. And you could buy a single mom a car. And you can't do that when you're broke, I've noticed. So, um we want to show you how to be outrageously generous and be in a position to be outrageously yeah. generous. And that's what Baby Steps Millionaire is all about. I'm really, really excited about the, what this book is going to do. It's Again, it's already sold a bazillion copies. I'm really thankful. Thank you to all of you. You guys make these things bestsellers for all of us that work here. And we, we really appreciate it. We appreciate the opportunity to serve you. So Baby Steps Millionaires comes out next week. You can still get it on pre-sale for $20. If you buy it before next week, like right now, in other words, you'll get the audio book and the ebook free and the Legacy Journey, which is a, a little book I did on wealth, audio book and ebook for free. And uh, Baby Steps Millionaires live stream, of course, is next Thursday. And the live stream is free, whether you buy the book or not. Ramsey Smart Tax, you'll get that as well. And that means that you can do your income tax filing uh, online for free and 30 days of ramsey plus access to financial peace university and every dollar for free all for 20 dollars. it's not free it's for 20 dollars. but you got the book 20 dollar book for 20 dollars. so the other stuff is thrown in that makes it free yeah that's that's how it really works so get all of that at ramseysolutions.com in the store it's pretty easy to do ramseysolutions.com Jump in there and make that part of it. Our question today comes from Blinds.com. They have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you mismeasure, you mess up. You pick the wrong color, they'll remake the blinds for free. Who does that? A great American company like Blinds.com. Yeah, you get free samples, free shipping, the new promos they run every month. You save even more. Use the promo code RAMSEY to get the best possible deal. Today's question comes from Ellie in California. Ellie writes... Since moving in with my boyfriend of six years, I've realized that his parents are extremely toxic. Just now realizing that, huh? Several After six years, years ago, of dating, you didn't have a clue? Exactly. Several years ago, they lost their business and home due to money mismanagement and showed up on his doorstep asking for a place to stay. Over the years, he has consistently put their needs over his own by loaning money, allowing them to live with him for free, and having them work at his businesses. Since they started working for him, he discovered that his mother was writing payroll checks to his father for work he never completed, ordering parts for their cars on his business account, and my boyfriend has been sued by a customer for 15 grand because of his father's mistakes. They will never take responsibility for any of this, and he will not confront them. I really care about him, but something is telling me to run. Yeah, I agree. Run! Yeah. <laughs> Two other people are telling you to run. Go! Run! There's three of us now. You, Dave, me, everybody. Run! Should I stay and continue to help him establish boundaries or run as fast as I can? Run as fast as you can. 
You can't solve that problem. Period. And it's and and and, and let me help you with this too. I'm I'm gonna be really mean. Okay, I'm just going to be really blunt. Shock alert. Okay, shock yes. alert. Yeah, <laughs> just to let. You, I'm, but I want to warn you ahead of time before I do it. Okay, so if after six years of dating him, you didn't realize this, you do not have the relational tools to enter into this toxic da- disaster and be of any good. Absolutely, that's not rude. You are naive. Yes, to, and that's being kind. Blind, intentionally so. <laughs> yes. Yeah, denial is not a river in Egypt. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, you, 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 um, yeah, here's the thing. This is a complicated relational psychological disaster that's going to require a long time and a lot of professional help to untwine Mm -hmm. and you don't want to be there. Right. Right. This is a, there's a, uh, this, this is, this is the worst part of the for better, for worse thing. You don't want to be there. Uh, because he, he, the problem is not his parents. The problem is his unwillingness to deal it, with it and your blindness, intentional blindness towards the whole thing. Right. Now we've got four people in this four person story, all misbehaving. So including what is, you, what does this look like? Six years of relationship plus a home divorce. I mean, so you, you sit down and say, there's a high probability you don't make it like 90 something. percent oh, probability yeah, yeah. This doesn't make it. So do you sit down and tell him, Hey, Here's the deal. You got, or are you just out? I, I'm done. I just don't like you anymore. I mean, I'm gone. I mean, it's just like, <laughs> I don't you know, like you anymore. I'm just, I'm done. I don't, whatever it is you have to say, I don't know how to break up. I haven't broken up in 40 years. So I don't, I don't like yeah, you anymore. I don't like you anymore. I'm done. But <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but I, mean I would me, just say, you. you know what? You. I've come to realize looking at this, that this thing is too big a mess for me to participate in. And I'm scared yeah. and I've got to leave because I'm scared. Yeah. Which would actually be the truth if you're smart. Yep. If you're smart enough to be scared, yep. it's the truth. Uh, and I'm not. This, that, this is just grandpa advice sitting beside the psychologist. Okay. Um, well, or, or whatever I, it is you are. Yeah, I'm not one of those. But do, I, the doctor, doctor. I'm not smart enough. But I, I will tell you, Doctor Doctor Deloney. Yes, it's time to go. Time to go. And my guess is you know this. You know it. You wouldn't. Have well, she wouldn't ask. I mean, she were. She, she, she knows. She she, she mapped knows. it out. She knows. Yeah, this is this is. Here's the other way you can ask the question, I, and I love this one. I heard somebody do this one time, and it it made a lot of sense to me. It's if you had a daughter, and she sat down at your knee, and said, "The guy I just moved in with," da, 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 fill in the blank. What would you tell your daughter? Yes, run. Yes, that's what, yeah, that's what you'd tell her. And, and never so, mistake this. Just because it hurts doesn't mean it's not the right thing, and just because you're going to miss him doesn't mean it's not the right thing. But it's time to go. There's some good parts of this, or you wouldn't have hung around. Yep. Yep. Time to go. But there, are, but you didn't list any of those. <laughs> Jeez. Well, There's tell- nothing else on the scale in this email except yeah, bad might, stuff. He's a business owner. He's kind. I mean, he's probably got some great he's, qualities. He, I, he's, yeah, he's an enabler, uh, uh, like world class, yeah. apparently. Uh, Daniel is in Atlanta. Hi, Daniel. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Holy moly, I got gotcha. you. You How did. Are you, sir? What's we got up? you. What's up? <laughs> Be careful David what you Lawrence wish for. Ramsey the third. I can't even believe it. <laughs> Listen, I, I wanted to call and thank you. Three weeks ago, I stumble on you. I'm watching some car blog, and some guy mentions you, Dave Ramsey. I said, oh, I've heard that name. So for the last three weeks, I've been... I've been binging your blog. Oh, my gosh. And, man, I have just learned so much about and just listening to people's experiences and, you know, so many things I can relate to, a lot of things uh, in your life, Dave. Um, you and I are the exact same age. Oh, wow. Well, Daniel, we uh, are honored, and I, I really appreciate all that. I am up against the clock, and I want to make sure I answer your question. And I don't here we go. Be, I don't want to be rude. I'm 60. I'm 61. Nothing really. We got twenty five thousand dollars to our name. We are one hundred percent debt free. Three weeks ago, I had a hundred grand in the bank. I took it. I paid off the mortgage. We owe nothing to no one. Okay. What's your household income? We've got about. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. What's your household income? Uh, let's call it one hundred. Okay. So, how fast are you going to build your retirement now that you don't have a payment in the world? Well, I, I want to build it quickly, and that's why I'm calling. If you had some, other than the, you know, reaching out to the Ramsey people, which I did, I did exactly spoke to five different ones. 
I wanted to get some specific recommendations for funds from you. If it's in your book, I'll wait. I ordered two of your books for my uh, boys. I appreciate it. I don't do specific fund recommendations because that's the equivalent of an endorsement of a particular fund. Instead, we teach you the concepts, and we let you go use those concepts to do your investing. Daniel, we're so honored to have you in the yeah, audience now, so sir. So great. Get in touch with the Smart Vester Pro. Sit down. You are on the right track. You're going to be amazing. personality is my co-host today joining us for a debt free scream is seth from cheyenne wyoming hey seth how are you doing well thanks dave it's casper actually oh i'm so sorry i'll work on my spelling here okay good (laughs) so uh how much debt have you paid off Hundred and sixty-five thousand. very good and how long did that take you it took uh, seven years from the time I started paying it off. Um, it was a long road, um, uh, uh, and it took us a long time. I, I know your average is probably a lot shorter than that, but uh, uh, cancer um, kind of got in the way, but we still did it. Oh, man. Whoa. Okay. What was your yeah. range of income during that seven years? Um, anywhere from 75 up to 100. Okay. So tell me about cancer getting in the way. Um, well, as you know, medical bills are expensive, and and cancer took my wife. That's oh my goodness. Oh man. Oh, yeah. I'm so sorry, um, Seth. When she passed that away? That was about six months ago. Oh. What was her name? So, Sierra. Sierra, beautiful. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, um, she was. Excuse me. Um, she was my rock. You know. Yeah. Um, and, and, uh, and stuff got expensive and we were trying to make our student loans. It was all student loans, by the way. Yeah. Um, and when it got tough, I was like, you know, we don't have to make that payment this month. We could do a reduced payment. She was, no, we're making the whole payment. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> and so she kept us going and, and, uh, and about a month after she passed, I got it paid off, and and she'd be happy that we're here doing this. Uh-huh. Wow! I've seen a picture of her on YouTube. What a beautiful, beautiful family. Yeah. How old was she? Thank you. Thirty-five. Oh my gosh, Seth. Wow. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, you. Uh, 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 getting out of debt is way down the list of things to do when you were fighting cancer. Um, yeah. And, and, and so I, I agree with you on that. And, and um, so if you uh, if you have to put things on hold or put uh, delay things or slow things or whatever during a, that kind of a battle, that's uh, that's what you should do. You, you should take care of your family before you worry about this other stuff. We want you to get out of debt because it's good for your family. But my goodness gracious. Wow. Yeah, but, but you also so, you also had a, a a a wife who was like you said your rock and man I've I've been around a few folks who are fighting cancer and they the fighter comes out like we're finishing this journey we started right it sounds like who she was yeah. oh yeah man she just uh, she wouldn't let me quit and you know we stayed on it and you know and, and I, I should say you know Dave you changed our lives you know. Um, we got on, we, you know, we got life insurance and that's really how we paid off the last 17,000 of the 165 is I had a life insurance policy and it took the burden off mm. after she was gone. And and I'm glad we did that because, you know, it, I, I guess it's part of her legacy that, you know, now that um, she's gone, you know, we, we did that. Now I can share that with my kids and, and, they're um they know they weren't forgotten yeah 
it's part of the story. It's part of your story, and and um, it's a, a beautifully sad story. Yeah. And um, uh, well man, said. Wow, a- 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 absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing. So, how old are your kiddos? I have a thirteen-year-old and a nine-year-old. So what got what got you and her on this journey? You and Sierra on this journey seven years ago. Well, um, it was after I graduated um, from school. Um, I, I, I'm an optometrist, and I got out of optometry school. Then I did a residency. During that residency, I deferred my loans for a year. Had a boy, and I watched it. <laughs> I watched it go from 155,000 to 165,000. Yeah, wow. Because I wasn't making payments, I'm like, "What? You got to be kidding me! That's yeah. what interest does to you." <laughs> um, so this, these were your student loans. Yes, huh. they were all mine. That, yeah. she, that she's fighting to pay off. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and so we, uh, um, I watched that happen, and and then of course, Dave, you're on the radio as, as I'm driving home from work every day, and you know what? Eventually, it just becomes contagious, and it's like let's get this done. Mm-hmm. And then she was definitely more of the gazelle intense, as you put it, than I was, but I brought it up, and she ran with it. Wow. Well, way to go, man. Way to go. Thank you. So have uh, the kids got a clear understanding? They're old enough to, uh, of uh, how this debt-free thing weaves into the story with their mom? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Cool. You know, they're, they're going to know it by the time they leave the house. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's their legacy. It's part of, it's part of her story now yeah. that's woven into yeah. her, into them. And it's part of it's right. something she cared about, and uh, it's part of the memory and part of the legacy and the whole thing. So it's really, really important that the family tree is changed here in the midst of this tragedy. And uh, so, wow, absolutely amazing. Amazing. So what are their names? Uh, Porter's my 13-year-old, and Lilia is my 9-year-old. Mm-hmm. All right. Very cool. Very cool. I, I just want to just, man, Seth, what a... What an incredible way to honor your wife by finishing the journey. You know what I mean? And when you get married, you set out on a journey together and it ends and, and we all know it ends for us, all of us, but it ends at play in times and ways and places we'll never expect. And brother, you kept going and you finished the journey out. What a, we talk about her legacy. What a legacy you've left for me, for the, all the listeners, for your kids, Good for you for honoring your wife in that way and putting a period at the end of that sentence for your whole family. That's just brilliant, man. Thank, thank you. It's awesome. Pretty incredible. Yeah. All right. It's Seth and Sierra, Porter and Lilia, all from Casper, Wyoming. $165,000 paid off in seven years, making 75000 to a hundred. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three. Two, one. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Mm. Amazing. Well, we've got a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires that we'll send you, and that's the next chapter in this story. Uh, there's a future in this story, just like there's a past in this story, and uh, we want to be part of that bright future as well. So also going to send you a copy of Total Money Makeover so you can give that to someone in the process. And uh, pretty, pretty incredible. Oh, uh, she was young. Too young. Way too young. Man. Way too young. You're just here for a vapor. Uh, yeah, that tombstone thing, man. When you look at those two dates on a tombstone, you got the beginning. Yep. And you got the end. Yeah. But when you go to heaven, when you graduate... And the question the old motivational speaker always asks is, what are you going to do with that dash? Huh. I never heard that before. What are you going to do with that dash? Hmm. And uh, I was speaking at a funeral for a friend of mine that passed a little while back. And uh, me and uh, Mansfield, Steve Mansfield, were both speaking at at this guy. We were good friends of both of them. And Mansfield said something I'll never forget. He said, a a funeral is a tuning fork. Hmm. Just like a birth is a tuning fork for your life. When you go to a funeral, you, you know, when you leave a funeral you, or even a wedding, too, you go, you go home and you go, 
I need to readjust. Yeah. I had a buddy. I need to readjust. I need to readjust. Week, yeah. that, that call may, helps me remind. Yeah. I need to readjust. I need to make sure I'm in. And, and you people listening, you need to freaking readjust. Absolutely. Yeah. You listen to those guys. That's about as motivational a call as I've had in a long time. Yeah. I had a buddy pass away this last week and uh, named Chris. And the number of people who came back to be with him and to be at that funeral, it, uh, I love the idea of a funeral being a, a way to just say, just like a birthday says I love you when you're here, a funeral is a way to say I love you when you're gone. Yep. And it's a beautiful testimony. Good job, Seth. What a stud, man. Man, amazing. This is the Ramsey Show. Wow. Scripture of the day, Psalm 113.3, from the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Jim Rhodes said, either you run the day or the day runs you. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today as we talk about your life and your money. Kim is in Boise, Idaho. Hi, Kim. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Um, I have a term life insurance question. Um, I have a highly disabled daughter who will require um, care her whole life. And I guess we're just wondering if you would approach life insurance differently in that situation where we'll have to be. I mean, technically, the government might provide care for her at some point, but we also may be needing to pay for help with her for the rest of her life. Um, I mean, the house should be paid off, but I guess um, in typical situations, you don't have to pay for that. So if one of us were to die, we would have to hire care for her forever. So, yeah, what's your advice in that scenario? It doesn't change. It just takes a highlighter marker and puts on our advice. It makes it very, very super important, as if it's not already important. So let me kind of walk you through without special needs, and then let's come back to your special needs, okay? So our normal advice is 15 to 20 years worth of level term insurance. During that 15 to 20 years, you would have paid off your home because we tell you not to have more than a 15-year mortgage. You will have gotten out of debt and began investing 15% of your household income into retirement. During that 15 to 20 years, you probably are going to end up with uh, $700,000, $800,000 in mutual funds, a paid-for house. And during that 15 to 20 years, your kids would grow up and leave. The last part's what's different, right? Right. So you still have to get the rest of that going, though. You still work. Oh no, to, we've done all that. You still work. You, if you're if you're funding retirement, you know you keep life yeah, insurance and in, you keep life insurance in place until you have enough money, instead of life insurance, to leave in trust for her to be taken care of. So how much is in your retirement accounts? Okay. Um, retirement. I I think we have around. Five hundred or seven hundred thousand. Um, That'd be a number you need to know. Closer we, than that. I know. I didn't ask. Uh, I didn't look it up no. before I called. But I mean, you just uh, need to know. You need to know that number. You don't have to know it to the penny. But five hundred to seven hundred is a pretty big spread. So, how old are you guys? Uh, Thirty-seven. Okay. So let's just run normal scenario. Okay. If you run a normal scenario and you guys keep investing in retirement and you get your house paid off and both of you die in your 60s, which is really our question mm-hmm. here. Okay, let's you take a 15-year policy. That puts you to uh, 52, right? Yeah, that puts you to 52, okay? At 52, you're going to have a million two in mutual funds, a million four in mutual funds in your retirement. And you should be having close to a paid-for house by then, if not having a paid-for, agreed? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you pass away at 52, which would mean you would die very, very early, both of you died early, okay? 
if you leave your retirement account and the house is sold and you leave that into a trust to be taken care of for your child, the trustee has close to $2 million that the income off of the $2 million will easily take care of your child with no life insurance. Okay. So it does not change our life insurance advice because the life insurance advice is to keep term insurance in place until you're debt free and you have enough assets in place to take care of the people left behind. Typically that's a spouse we're referring to because the kids are grown and gone or they're little kids, one of the two. But in your case, you've got this perpetual need beyond the two of you passing to take care of the special needs. So it's called a special needs trust and it's a part of your will. And it's formed upon the second person to die, and all of your assets are poured into that trust with direct and detailed instructions to the trustee of how you want them invested, and how okay. they're how, and under what circumstances they're to be paid out beyond the income, and to who they're to be paid out to, and so forth. How the child's to be cared for. Right. But I mean, a couple hundred thousand dollars a year will take care of this kid. And that's what you're going to have at 52. Right. Okay. So your need for life insurance to supplement that goes away as your wealth increases and your debt decreases. Do you see how I'm doing that? Yeah. What's the nature of the special need? Uh, cerebral palsy. Okay. Cool. All right. And how, how, boy or girl? A girl. How old is she now? Eight. Okay. Cool. I've got a niece, uh, that's CP, that's a beautiful, beautiful person. It's 30 in a wheelchair. And so my brother and sister-in-law are facing the exact same kinds of things. Uh, she just has gone out and is living on her own for the first time. They didn't think she'd do that, mm -hmm. be able to do that. So it's a wonderful victory story. We're proud of her. And, yeah. uh, and proud of them yeah. for letting her. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> it's hard to do. But, uh, uh, but yeah, yeah it's, uh, it, it's a process. And uh, how severe is her CP? Uh, she, very. She, she will be dependent forever. No, I, I know that. I understood that okay. part. I'm just saying, is she wheelchair? Um, she's nonverbal. Yeah, she's nonverbal, nonmobile. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, yeah. you guys, you guys got a real yeah. battle on your hands, and you, you're 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 very brave people. Congratulations, and uh, God gives a special measure of strength to to people He gives these assignments to. Yeah. So you're you're beautiful. We appreciate you, and we appreciate you calling in and who you are. And anytime we can help you, we will. But get a will done with a special needs trust. Pour your assets into that until you have assets. You pour the term life insurance into that, and that'll take care of your baby. And uh, and you give very clear, specific instructions as to how it's to be invested and how the proceeds off of the investments are to be used for the care. Uh, it's very detailed. And for the rest of you, by the way, that have children that you're not facing that with, you can do the same thing for minor children. And that when my children were minors, John, that's how our will was set up. It, upon our death, there's a children's trust well, that was formed. Trust. Mine too. Yeah. Uh, not today, because our children are grown, but uh, when they were minors. And then not only who the guardian is going to be, uh, but a different person is the trustee. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I want you, in my case, I said, I want you to invest it in the four types of mutual funds we talk about, growth, <laughs> growth, and income, aggressive growth. And the income is pulled off. And for, uh, again, we're talking about minor children you, the, you know, that, that don't, do not have a special need. Then we just said, okay, you can pull the money off in addition to the income that's used to take care of the kids. They, if there needs to be some other withdrawals, it could be for buying a first car mm -hmm. within reason. It could be for paying for college. It could be for major medical that pops up. Uh, but otherwise, you keep your hands off of it, hmm. and you let it grow, and you let the nest egg produce the income, lay the golden eggs that takes care of the babies. Gotcha. And that's how it's set up. And, and you can fund that with life insurance until you have enough money hmm. in your retirement to cause it to pour over into that. And it's your secondary beneficiary on your retirement. Your first beneficiary is your spouse. But if both of you are gone, is what we're talking about, then your secondary beneficiary is named that family trust. So in this new year... Get a will. Absolutely. Get a will. And get yours updated, too, by will. the way. I talked to a guy the other day, had gone through a divorce and didn't ever update his will. So his ex-wife still the chief beneficiary of all of his assets? You want to hear a fun court case is trying to pry that one away from your kids, because you can't. Try to pry that away from her to give to a your Trump's, kids. Oh, you won't. And she's the ex. She won't. And they're her kids. 
It's <laughs> incredible. What a disaster. Get a will. And change your beneficiaries when you go through a divorce. My God. Get it. Get stuff updated. It's time. Man, you just got to do it's business time. like you're freaking adults or something. Don't outsource your life. Plug back in. Get Ugh. it done. Get a will. It's outsource your life is a thing with you today, and it's I like it. Driving me it's crazy. Good. It's, 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 it's a it's good phrase. 2022. It's a good phrase. Don't outsource your life. Don't 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 let someone else live your life for you. It's a uh, it's it's the Game Boy generation. It, it, the Nintendo it's the generation. generation. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of really doing it, we do it on TV. Yeah. We are we, we watch someone, someone else, else to do, do it, it for on us. TV. Yeah. yeah. Gross. Just gross. Just gross. Oh man. Uh, all right. That's good. Let's get a lo- get a will. In that right there. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> what a show. Dr. John Deloney, James Childs, and Jenna on the phones. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. This is James Childs, producer of The Ramsey Show. You can listen to all our shows with the Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. Browse by topic or even sync clips to your friends. Download the Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today.